security line it took us like 30 35 minutes here in Orlando and our flight is delayed 50 minutes so I would just sit and wait to go to San Juan and come right back home or home to training so I'm just gonna study for my test that I have tomorrow um, and yeah I'm sleeping I want to go to sleep on the plane, but we're not allowed to. So I gotta, I gotta find something to do to keep myself awake. But I'll just be waiting for now. Observation flights are so boring. <coughs> so on um, my flight down here, I had an aisle seat. I was nice and comfortable. And then the two people that were sitting next to me came and they both required seatbelt extensions and I was only able to sit in like half of my seat because the person next to me was taking up the other half of my seat. So it just wasn't the most comfortable flight I've ever flown on and I had to find a way to keep myself awake because we're not allowed to go to sleep on the observation flight obviously because we're supposed to be observing but nonetheless the crew was very nice um, they let us sit in on their um, briefing flight deck briefing um, we got to go into the galley and kind of see how they set up and things like that they were very very sweet so and then now our flight from San Juan back to Orlando has been delayed about an hour so we're just waiting and sitting <sighs> yeah and they always say that there's a lot of waiting and sitting in this career so I might as well just go ahead and get used to that right now right y'all San Juan one see that's all I got my room I've been playing around when halfway studying with some people ever since I got back um, now I'm dead tired I don't even know why I played with them like that it is 2 a.m. let's talk about the observation flight a little bit so the whole point of the observation flight is exactly what it sounds like to observe the crew on the flight doing everything that we've been learning and what I just learned today is that just like any other job, you go through a training and they teach you certain ways that certain things are supposed to be done. And then once you get, you know, on the line or start doing the job yourself and you get comfortable, everybody comes up with their own ways to do things. So that's what I realized today. So I wanted to ask some questions, but they told us not to really point out anything that um, the flight um, crew was doing wrong if that's not the way that we've learned it because we don't want to you know put them on the spot and make them nervous or think you know think it's an evaluation or anything like that um, but the crews that we had were very they were really nice helpful informative motivational um, I was able to see like them put together the galley on the plane the galley is the kitchen um, prepare the snack basket things like that um, the thing that I really wanted to see was them like arming doors and things like that and I wasn't really able to see that because both of the flights that I was on were completely full so I couldn't move my seat up any closer but it was nice I guess you know I keep thinking today is Sunday because I guess in my mind it felt like an off day since we weren't sitting in class all day today. But back to that grind tomorrow, y'all. So I wish I could have left the airport in San Juan and just got out and went and had some authentic 
San Juan food or whatever you would call it. But we had a three-hour three layover there, and we just sat in the airport just in case anything, like, changed or updated. So that was kind of bummerish, but... <laughs> this isn't a bad view, y'all. No, this is nice. It ain't nothing to look at. And I even like just... the music from the um, Real Car Place. Oh, is that where that goes from? Yeah, some Real Car music. I want to go to the pilot side. I want to go sit there in facility. Oh, the hangar. Is that where they go? That's where the we were supposed to go over there Fourth yeah. of July, but really, yeah, they said Cause that because of whatever. Usually, in training, you do your CRM. Oh, hello, everybody. So it is now twelve twelve a.m. I'm just getting back to my room. It's been a, another super long day. Um, we started class at one p.m. We took our KSV. I got a 90. Yeah. Yes. Another KSV. Hallelujah. Um, we got out of class today about 9.30. So it was a very interactive day. So we weren't just really sitting there doing instructor-led trainings. Um, we were on the simulators for a majority of the day. So that was good. Um, so yeah, so today we learned how to open, close, disarm, and arm the E-190 doors, um, and how to do the prepare for arrival and prepare for departure and um, pre-flight emergency equipment. And so now tomorrow we have our MSVs for both of those. So we have two MSVs tomorrow over everything that we learned today. So usually I would be kind of freaking out about this because the two MSVs that we've taken so far, like, I just get so flustered. They're so darn annoying. Um, but I kind of feel good about these because the only thing different about what we have to do with the E-190 compared to the A320, the plane that we learned last week, um, is just know the location. So all the emergency equipment is the same. The way you pre-flight everything is the same. We just have to know the locations. So I just looked up because I've been trying to go over it in my head and I was kind of struggling and trying to figure out how to remember everything and not confuse it with the other plane. But I just ran into this guy in the AM class and he was studying for it and he broke it down in a way that I was like, oh my God, Eureka. Like, it was so amazing the way he did it. So now I'm just like happy because I'm just like, oh, I got it down pat now. Like, I don't really have to worry about that. The only thing I have to worry about is using correct verbiage um, when we're um, opening and closing and disarming and arming the door tomorrow because the verbiage for that door is different than the one on the A320. But today when we kind of did our trial run through, I did really good on it. So I feel confident. I just need to go to bed and get some rest because I stayed up late last night and got up early this morning. and. I should have probably been in my bed now by like 10 o'clock, but I was downstairs fooling around with people. So, but that's really about it. I mean, we are humping through these days, y'all, like humping, humping through. And it's so funny, we had a new in-flight training class start today. Today was their first day of orientation. Their class is half the size of ours. But they just kind of been looking at us like why do y'all look so dead and tired and it's just like all we keep saying to them is you're gonna look like this too after sunday like they don't even know what they get themselves into like just two three weeks ago i was the same little excited bee to be here and yay and everything was just great and i was sipping on the blue juice as they like to call it here and now i'm just ready to be gone I'm just ready to be done. Like, I keep trying to think to myself, have I ever done anything like this intense in my life? And nothing. I can't think of anything, literally anything that compares to the intensity of this training program. Like, nope, getting my real estate license, that was stressful, but that was just one test to pass. You know, it was, it was a hard test but it was just one test to pass. Uh, college, 
college is college like that that was whatever you know like I don't know of anything that nothing compares to this I'll get these wings and I hope and pray that this is the first and only and last airline that I'll ever be with because I can't imagine going through this again I could never imagine going through this again like one of my friends here she is She's 40 and she worked for United back in the day before 9-11 happened Then she got furloughed. Then she didn't fly for about a couple of years, about eight or so years, I think eight or ten years maybe. And then she just had the, the itch to get back into it. She, so she started off with a very small regional, Air Wisconsin. And she graduated from there and then two weeks later she got another offer from... American Eagle so then she went to their training um, and now it's only been like six months since she's been there and so now she's here and I'm just like that's three airline trainings in one year and I'm just like girl how are you, how how do you do that like no no so for everybody that has asked me why airline training is so long and what we do and why is it so intense? All y'all have to do is pass out snacks and sodas and, and whatever. <sighs> Please, take it from me. It's, it's not as simple as it looks. Not at all. Not at all. I'm happy I'm here. I worked really hard and prayed really long to get here. Um, so I would never just like say, oh, I can't handle this. Let me go. But I don't think I would ever do it again. <laughs> It's so crazy. It's crazy. We have study group in the morning for our MSVs. I'm going to show my study group what I learned tonight from um, TJ. Like, I'm just still so amazed by how he broke that down. Like, you know, it's good to study with the same people constantly because, you know, if you're passing and you're studying with the same people, obviously you're doing right. But I am just so happy I ran into him and saw him doing that. Mind blown. That's why, like, I try to make friends with everybody here. Well, not necessarily friends, but I at least try to have some form of communication with everybody at least once. Because when we're splitting the AM and PM, it's really hard to get to know the other class because y'all are just living on two different spectrums. Like, truly. Like, we see each other maybe in between 9 and 10 PM, and that's really it, unless it's an off day. So it's hard to get to know them, but I at least, like, if I see them in the hallway, like, I at least try to talk to them so we can just talk about, like, what's going on and, you know, are you processing this this way or do you have ideas? Just to bounce things off other people just because this stuff is crazy. Nobody got time to come all the way here and go home. So I'm just hoping that, you know, the rest of our class can make it through this week. Um, and then we'll get to, somebody told me this week was hell week, but it's not next week is hell week so if we could just make it through this week this week is just jam-packed full of information and msvs and ksvs but it's not hell week hell week is next week tomorrow we start learning emergency evacuations and that is the stuff that i don't even want to think about and that's just truly the reality of what we're doing here uh, yes we learn you know customer service like a little bit like we hardly even touch on that. Um, but everything, is, everything else is emergency equipment and da da da. But now we're learning. We're going deep into actual emergencies and what you do if a plane crashes or you know a land crash or a water crash or somebody has a heart attack on the plane or just everything that I don't want to think about. I'm gonna have to start thinking about that now because I don't like going into this career thinking about the negative things and the scary things and all of that. But now I'm going to have to just embrace it because that's just, it's a possibility. Planes crash. It happens. <sighs> oh, just thinking about it now just makes me feel weird. I don't even want to think about that. Anyways, let me stop rambling my mouth. Um, thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for the, oh, well, if you ding the bell. I don't know if I can know when y'all ding the bell, but if you ding the bell, let me know. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Good night.